So this is a video about Vespaquin and Combi, right? Honeybees. So get this, the Pokemon world is based heavily on our own. Shocking. Most Pokemon are inspired by a real-world animal or mythical creature from our world. And nine times out of ten, or heck, even like 95% of the time, there's no issue at all. Not that taking creative liberties is an issue, but what I mean is, most of the time, a Pokemon based on a thing does a pretty good job at being accurately a portrayal of a fantasization of that thing. Did that come out right? What I mean is, like, Blastoise is a pretty good tortoise. Pikachu is an electric mouse. You know, you can't really go wrong with that. There's Chinese dragons, there's yokai, everything's pretty good, you know, they don't get anything totally wrong. But occasionally they do. In the case of Combi and Vespaquin, they got some details very wrong. But I don't really blame Game Freak on that one, as I'm not sure how you would go about doing what they wanted to do otherwise with the way their game's gameplay mechanics work. Uh, but what do I mean? I mean Vespaquin are only female, which... That part makes sense. You know, the queen bee and all that. Beehives are ruled over by a queen, not a king. And so it makes sense that Vespaquin is a female-only Pokemon. So what's so inaccurate about this? Well, the issue isn't in Vespaquin, it's in Combi. First of all, just look at it. What? That's not aerodynamic at all. How does this thing become this way? What? It shouldn't be able to fly. Hilariously though, there's a classic joke about regular honeybees that goes the same way. Based on human knowledge of aerodynamics and flight, a honeybee should not be able to fly with its wings being the size they are. They are far too small for the size of its body. Despite this, the honeybee flies anyway. <coughs> but what is the main issue here? Well, Combi's sex ratio. They are 87.5% male and 12.5% female. Which? is the opposite case for real honeybees. Each hive of honeybees has a queen and 100 female worker bees for every one male drone bee. And I don't mean four as in those 100 females are for the one male. <laughs> Hives aren't just massive harem centers. I mean, the sex ratio is extreme, but that's not to say that the males aren't getting it on constantly. Male drones don't have stingers and they do not go out to collect nectar or pollen or anything. Their primary job is to mate with the queen, who lays all the eggs. But now in a combi hive, does that mean the Vespaquen is getting it on constantly? How many cigarettes does she go through? I mean, after all, most combi are male. And the male's sole job is to... All that. So, you see, that's the issue with combi. The sex ratios are basically reversed. I suppose from a gameplay or game design standpoint, that makes sense. After all, the queen bee is the big rare one, and a queen bee makes sense for an evolution, and so you'd want only the females to evolve into the queen, but then if you just had all of the ratios be accurate, suddenly getting a Vespaquin isn't hard at all. It kind of removes the fun of going through combis and then finding that one female that you could evolve, finally! It just kind of takes it away. But there is a solution. Instead of messing up the honeybee inspiration, if I were Game Freak at the time, here's how I would fix it. With marks and one or two new evolutions. Male combis could either either still not evolve, or perhaps evolve into a bee that has high defense, as it doesn't do much besides guard the hive and lays about. Or you could just make it even more accurate and have it either not evolve, or evolve into something that's totally worthless. It's just there to, uh, complete your Pokedex. It is absolute trash and competitive. Male bees are the worst. But with just doing that, the issue is still there. You still have a wrong sex ratio, and now just suddenly the males can evolve. What's the big whoop? Well. How about we make the sex ratios accurate, so mostly female, and the males are super rare. But then we have two categories of female bees. There are plenty of Pokemon that have loads of different forms. Take Minior, for example, it's got like six. I would make the standard female combis the super common ones, and they evolve into a different evolution. A warrior bee, like just a bee, but instead of a stinger on its butt, it has a stinger sword and like a bee shield, maybe a flower. Something. I don't, it'd be cool. There's probably fan art of like an idea with that. If I can find any, it'll be here. It's really good. And then there would be a combi with a mark, or maybe it's a large combi, like how Gorgeist has different sizes also. And that's the combi that can evolve into Vespaquin. 
and it's super rare. Even rarer than the males. Oh, and just to make things fun for all the people wanting to just breed their way to all of these, uh, only Vespaquin can breed and only with the male of the same species. There are other female Pokemon that can't breed, like Nidoqueen, which is weird, but I have a whole video about it right here. It's actually a lot more interesting than you'd think. Click it, it's way good. But what I'm getting at is that that concept isn't anything new, and it would make the combi Vespaquin family a lot cooler and more accurate to how they actually are. I think it'd be way cool. Maybe save that for like a Gen 4 remake. I want a Gen 4 remake. Hmm. So, that's what's wrong with Combi, and what I would do to fix it. Though at this point, it's probably too late, and it'll probably never happen. But it's still fun to think about these things. Do you have any interesting things or thoughts like this one? Let me know down below, and it may wind up as a video on here. Thanks for watching, and until next time, you never stop using your noggin.